Konnichiwa. This is the Shogunstein, and this is an unboxing of the historical-themed game, The Shores of Tripoli. It is by Kevin Bertram, and it is the story of the uh, war between the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Marine Corps versus the Barbary Pirates from 1801 to 1805, and it is from Fort Circle Games. And I just want to thank Kevin Bertram and Fort Circle Games for donating a copy of this game to my other gig. Obviously, my main gig is being a uh, influential board game and Lego and uh, music and book uh, YouTuber. But when I am not putting out these viral videos of uh, games and music and books, I have a side gig of uh, teaching high school history. So I want to thank uh, Fort Circle Games and uh, Kevin Bertram for donating a copy of this game to our classroom. And we're looking forward to uh, playing this with students and other history teachers. So thank you for the donation of this game, The Shores of Tripoli. Again, it is a two-player game, and it also has a solo mode. Now, The Shores of Tripoli... Um, the Barbary Pirates, this was a conflict between the Barbary Pirates who were roaming the waters off of what today would be Tunisia, Algeria, Tripoli, and the uh, U.S. Navy and Marine Corps. It happened during the presidency of Thomas Jefferson. Most people know Thomas Jefferson for writing the Declaration of Independence. Most people know that he was a president of the United States. He was the third president. But I don't think as many people know about what was going on at the time of his presidency and some of the issues involved in his presidency. So we tend to know that he was a president, but not necessarily know as much about what was going on while he was president. And the Barbary Pirate War was one of the major things going on during his presidency. So the U.S. Navy began to, to be built on the John Adams, and then um, Thomas Jefferson will, will ramp it up a bit with the Barbary Pirate War. This story, um, if you want a good entry point to this history, the Brian Kilmeade series, which includes the, the George Washington and the Secret Six, and then the Thomas Jefferson and the uh, Tripoli Pirates, and then the uh, there's a Andrew Jackson and the Battle of New Orleans, and then the, I think the latest one is about uh, Sam Houston and the Battle of the Alamo. That's a very good series for intros to some historical events that maybe people don't know about. And it was a very popular. They're all very popular. Those four books and the Thomas Jefferson one. Um, was a good entry point for a lot of people about this history. If you want something a little more in depth, you should check out Ian Toll's book, Six Frigates, which is a history of the beginning of the U.S. Navy, and this is a big part of that story. Ian Toll has gone on to write a three-volume series on World War II in the Pacific that is three of the best nonfiction books I've ever read. So I highly recommend Six Frigates and any of the works by Ian Toll. But they are much um, heavier, uh, bigger, not light reading books. They read very, you know, they're very easy to read and they're very descriptive and, and they're very, um, you know, engaging. But, you know, they are very thick, big books that maybe could be intimidating to some people and that's why I think the Brian Kilmeade series is a, a good entry point if you're not a uh, someone who wants to pick up a 900-page history book. If you do want to pick up a 900-page history book, Ian Toll is the way to do it. So Thomas Jefferson um, became president in what is known as the Revolution of 1800. So prior to that, we had George Washington, who was against political parties, but during his presidency, he had this sort of all-star cabinet that included Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton proposed a financial plan to make the U.S. an economic superpower, which had some things that uh, Thomas Jefferson disagreed with. And it 
came down to their interpretations of the Constitution. Alexander Hamilton and his faction believed that the uh, the Constitution was uh, like a pair of uh, sweatpants. You could stretch it. It had an elastic clause. And uh, even though it didn't say we could have a national bank, you know, you could read between the lines in the elastic clause and, and have a national bank. Thomas Jefferson was uh, not someone that believed that you could stretch the Constitution. He believed in a strict interpretation, sort of a skinny jeans interpretation that doesn't stretch. And he said you couldn't have a national bank. That split over Hamilton's financial plan about whether or not, again, you can read between the lines and have your loose interpretation or Jefferson's strict interpretation led to the formations of the first political parties. Hamilton and John Adams will lead what became the Federalist Party, and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison will lead the most confusingly named political party ever, the Democratic-Republicans. George Washington hated the whole thing and spoke about how political parties are terrible in his famous farewell address. When Thomas Jefferson became president, and uh, he is going to be after John Adams, you should also keep in mind that the United States was not a very strong military power, and there were forces trying to get the United States to either back England or France in the conflicts going on in Europe. And at any point, you know, the U.S. could have easily been drawn into a war with either England or France. And that's sort of the background of what's going on when Adams and Jefferson are president. When Jefferson is inaugurated, people were a bit nervous because there had not been the transfer of power between different political parties yet. So in his uh, inaugural address, Thomas Jefferson had a theme of, we are all Federalists, we are all Republicans. That's a very good, powerful theme, maybe something we should be thinking about today. We are all Federalists, we are all Republicans. So maybe people should, just as much as, again, the Declaration of Independence, obviously a very important speech, speech, very important document, one of our most important documents in the history of the world, obviously something we should remember Thomas Jefferson for. But I think you should take a look at that first inaugural address. I think there's a lot of very important things in there as well. So he becomes president, and in the backdrop, you have the United States, you know, kind of in between England and France and the threat of war, and we were not strong enough militarily to handle either of that. And and also at this time, we were having, uh, we were not necessarily strong enough to handle the Barbary pirate threat right away either. So you're going to start seeing a bit of a buildup of the U.S. Navy, and ultimately this conflict will take place between 1801 and 1805. It'll involve uh, the areas of, again, today, Tunis, Algiers, Tripoli, a little bit of Morocco, and even, you know, uh, Sweden is going to kind of be involved a little bit as, as well as their ships were in the in the in the area at the the time, but the conflict will come to an end around 1805 between a blockade that the uh, U.S. ships put on and a uh, land force, an expedition that's going to launch from Egypt. Those two things will uh, lead to the end of the uh, first Barbary pirate war. And what's nice is in the game, in a much better summary than I could give. Uh, there is a uh, historical supplement uh, book that has way more detail about what happened. So you get some good history. And this is why I would love to be able to get these history-themed games into the classroom more because you can learn history and play a fun game. So we have this uh, historical background booklet that comes in the game as well. And again, it's going to do a much better job uh, talking about the Barbary Pirate War than I just did. And again, you might want to check out that Brian Kilmeade book. So what do we have in the in the box here? Well, got a lot of dice. There's going to be a lot of dice rolling in here because 
you're going to have naval combat, you're going to have bombardment, and you're also going to have land combat. So you're using dice, you got different, uh, you got colors representing the, uh, imagine it's going to be um, the Barbary Pirates will be red, the U.S. forces are blue, and uh, the yellow, I imagine, is going to represent maybe some of the other uh, potential people in the area, whether it be the Swedes or possible allies for the Barbary Pirates. We have an instruction book, which is not too um, thick and uh, very easy to follow. Showing you what you got in here. Showing you your dice. You got ship meeples. We got decks of cards. We got the board. And the instructions seem very uh, well laid out and uh, easy to follow. It goes over the victory conditions, which are different. If you're the Americans, you are looking to sign a treaty, and there are conditions you're going to meet to sign the treaty. And if you are the pirates, you're looking to destroy either uh, a number of the U.S. ships or collect a certain amount of tribute. I'm going to tell you about all the card actions, the order of play, how combat works, and then it also has the solitaire rules. So again, this is a two-player game with a solo mode. And in the solo mode, you are playing as the Americans and you are battling the pirates. And the pirates are known as the T-Bot. The T-Bots are the Barbary Pirates who you'll be playing against. You'll be playing as the Americans. So again, we have a lot of meeples for the bigger ships and the smaller ships and cubes that are going to represent the land forces and then we're going to have that you're going to have uh, some discs to represent uh, the coins the tribute so we got a lot of meeples as a colorblind player i'm seeing blue i'm seeing yellow i'm seeing red three colors that are easy to differentiate, so that is always something the Shogunstein is looking for when he's looking at games. You know, do they use you know green, uh, you know green, red, and, and brown? They're not doing that here. You got you got the red, you got the blue, you got the yellow. Very easy to tell the difference. There's going to be two decks of cards. You have a deck for the um, Barbary Pirates and the Pasha is going to be on the uh, the back of the card here for the uh, Tripoli Pirates. And you got Thomas Jefferson for the Americans. And the card quality is very good. And the cards are going to have, depending on the card, they could have uh, certain conditions that have to, have to be met. There are ways you can discard cards to uh, get some actions. And again, you have to, some of the cards have to be played at a certain time in the game. We'll see on the board that uh, the game is played over rounds, which represent different times, different years of the war. So we got nice cards. I believe there's going to be some solitaire, solo, T bot cards in here as well. So again, we got Jefferson, we got the, the Pasha. We have a copy of a famous letter that Jefferson wrote to the Pasha. So again, you got some good historical theme here. Again, very thematic. The game uh, oozes going through the, the components here. It definitely oozes theme. It definitely uh, feels like, you know, uh, a game about the Barbary Pirates. Sometimes you get um, themes that are just kind of stuck on but you know the box and the components and the card art really does give you the uh feel of the uh event and then we have a board so again we're we got that northern part of africa here so we got uh tripoli which would be uh basically modern day uh libya we got Algeria and Morocco. And you'll see there are some ports and there's 
open ocean. Here's Egypt. Actually, the board goes out. So it is kind of a uh, long board here. We got uh, Gibraltar. Here we got our supply for the Barbary Pirates, for the U.S. forces, the U.S. Navy, and the Marines. We got Alexandria. We got Malta. Tripoli, Benghazi, which again, modern day Libya. You know, here's a city that became important in more recent history. Dern, Tunis, Algiers, Tangier. So, very cool board. So, again, here you got the years. So, certain cards, certain things can only be played once you've reached a certain point in time. So we're going to go from 1801 to 1806, and then we got spring, summer, fall, winter. So this is a look at the components. Again, this board is a uh, well-made board. It is longer than I thought it would be, and it is good component, good card quality with nice art with your Thomas Jefferson or the Pasha of uh, Tripoli. We got a lot of dice, a lot of D6s. We got the historical supplement. We got a copy of the letter from Jefferson to the uh, Pasha of Tripoli. Cool meeples of ships and cubes for our army and the instructions. So this is a look at what's in the box. Can't wait to play this game. I'm going to teach it to Little Shogunstein. I also like to play it with some other uh, people on my, uh, you know, my uh, side gig. Some other history people. Talk to them about that. And again, hopefully uh, get some students to um, play this as well. But I'm definitely going to bring this to my, my side hustle and uh, bring it to the other uh, history people there. So again, thank you Fort Circle Games for the donation. And uh, we'll let you know about the game plan, what we think, in a future video. In the meantime, uh, check out this game. And also, you might want to, again, read either Ian Toll if you want to do a, you know, very deep dive. Or if you want a lighter, uh, more introductory uh, look at it, look at the Brian Kilmeade book. This is the Shogunstein out.